Hey, Baker Place. Hey, Jefferson Elementary. We're so excited to see you again. We are going to have a special show today with um, some instruments that we have in our house. And uh, we have several of the families, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna need your help this time. Um, and we want you to help us out by sending us some photos and videos over the next few days. And then we'll share them on Friday on our last video of the week. Um, so we'll tell you all about that in just a few minutes. But first, uh, let's talk about Rachmaninoff for just a second. Remember we <laughs> talked about our Russian composer Rachmaninoff, sure. Um, Thank you, Vanna. You're welcome. Um, our Russian <clears throat> composer Rachmaninoff, who lived from 1873 to 1943. And we would love to hear from you what kind of music that you listen to, which of the videos you like the best. Maybe you looked up some other videos on YouTube or um, Apple Music or Spotify, or you found them on Pandora, and you wanted to share some of your favorites. We would love to hear about that from you guys. All right, next. We're gonna to try to keep this video short today because we didn't realize YouTube had a max limit on your video. That's why we had two videos last time. So we're gonna to try to keep this one a little shorter uh, and squeeze everything in today. So my third graders, you have been learning about instrument families and everybody else was going to learn about instrument families right before spring break. So we're going to um, take a minute and talk about that on our video today and share some of the video, yeah. um, share some of the yeah. instruments that we have. Mm -hmm. So here are our four families of instruments. We're gonna start with the string family, then percussion, woodwind, and brass. And those four uh, are basically every single instrument in the entire world can fit into one of these four categories. And so we call that identifying and classifying instruments. That's one of our music standards um, for responding in music class is that we can identify and classify the instrument. So basically identify means you look at an instrument and you know what it is. And the second thing classifying means you can look at an instrument and or hear an instrument and know which of these families it belongs to. You're classifying it by putting it into these categories. Mm -hmm. So one thing to remember about the families is that the way we split them into families is how they vibrate because all sound is vibrations. So we can listen to how it's vibrating, know how you made it vibrate, and that tells you what family it belongs into. Because uh, like when we get down here to numbers three and four, a saxophone is made out of brass, but it is in the woodwind family. Yes. And that's because <clears throat> of the way that you make the instrument vibrate. Yes, that's true. Dr. Johnson used to play saxophone for a long time. Uh -huh. When we were dating, he was a saxophone player, not just a horn player. So you probably didn't know about that. About yeah. <laughs> um, so today we're going to start with string family. You guys know that's the easy family. Anything that has strings like a ukulele or a guitar or the American folk instrument, a banjo. Um, let's see, what else? Mandolin. Right, a uh, harp. And then we get into the major four. Violin, viola, cello, and bass are the main four instruments in an orchestra. And you don't find those in bands. Those are only in orchestras. Now, if you are in a jazz band, you might find a bass. Right, you might find a double bass. Um, they have electric guitars. That's, but that's true. But that's about it. And if you are in a bluegrass <laughs> band, you might play a violin. Mm -hmm. But while it is a violin, in bluegrass, they don't call it a violin, they call it a fiddle. It's the same exact instrument, people. Yeah. There's no difference. It's the way you play it. <laughs> it's just, the, it's the same thing. That's right, it's just the way that you play it, yeah. the style of music that you're playing makes it um, a fiddle compared mm -hmm. to a violin. So if you have any pictures or videos of you playing a string instrument, including the piano, which you can kind of see in the back of the room. <clears throat> now there, so the there's thing like a mysterious, Fifth family. Well, the, the keyboard family, but with the piano, we normally classify that under the percussion family because even though it has strings inside of it and the strings vibrate, you are actually hitting the um, the strings with uh, with the mallet when you press down the keys. So Now that is fighting words, Dr. <clears throat> yeah, Johnson, because in Ms. So, Johnson's yeah. class, we classify it as a string yeah. instrument yeah. because what is vibrating the strings. Yeah. 
So Johnson versus Johnson here. Mm -hmm. How about you guys help us out? You can leave a <laughs> comment on this video or you can send us an email or a video of yourself explaining why you think a piano would fall either into the string family because it has strings in it. That's <clears throat> what makes the sound. Or oh, if percussion. you are like Dr. Johnson, you think it's percussion because you hit the key and a mallet hits the string, which is technically hitting is, brings us right into our next family, which is mm -hmm. percussion. So you guys help us decide. Um, so let's talk about the percussion family since we're there. You are a percussion instrument. Anything in your house is a percussion instrument because anything that you hit or shake or scrape is a percussion instrument. So you can by clapping or stomping or or any kind of sound yeah, except anything. your voice, any kind of sound that you make uh, is body percussion. You can turn your pots and pans into percussion instruments. Let me with per parent permission, <laughs> please don't get us in trouble. Yeah. Um, and then of course you have your normal drums, xylophones, mm -hmm. what else? Chimes, uh, cymbals, uh, timpani, which Boom is Boom whackers, big drum. oh that's true. Timpani, the big um, drum. Um, um, let's see, it's basically anything. Lots of things. <laughs> anything can be turned into a percussion instrument. Mm -hmm. As long as you're hitting, scraping, or shaking it, it's percussion. Yep. And then, and, and that is the oldest and biggest family because drum was the very first instrument ever created and it was used for um, signaling, it was used for um, <clears throat> gatherings. Drums yeah. was the very first, drums were the first instrument ever made. And then anything can be percussion. So it's legit the biggest family in the entire world. So if you have percussion instruments at your house, per, like normal percussion instruments, like drums, triangle, any of those, or maybe you make some percussion instruments at your house. Maybe you make a shaker. Maybe you um, play on your pots and pans with parent permission. Mm -hmm. um, then you can send us a video or a picture of you doing that. Our next family is the woodwind family. <clears throat> woodwind family, um, obviously, it has the word wind in it. So what do you do? You blow air through the instrument. <laughs> All you have to do is blow air in the instrument, and it vibrates on its own. Some of the instruments have a single reed or a double reed. Um, mm -hmm. That's a small piece of wood. A double reed means two pieces of wood. A single reed is one piece of wood that you attach to the mouthpiece. Yep. And the wood vibrates either against itself or against the plastic, and that creates vibrations. Yep. And that's what you need to create a sound. <clears throat> right. That's why they call it a woodwind, because you're using your air to blow through the instrument, and the thing vibrating is the piece of wood, the reed. That's true. And the flute doesn't have any of those. It's special. The flutes right. and piccolos, all you have to do is blow across them, mm -hmm to create the vibrations in the sound. And if I'm smart, I will empty out one of the Coke bottles that we have in the house <laughs> and demonstrate for the, that for you next time. Right, but you know, the idea was, is that um, the first flutes were more than likely you know, made out of wood and things like that. So that's, right. that's, a, that's probably a primary reason why it's classified under wood wind. Wood wind, yeah, there's some reasons why it would be wood wind. Yeah. But wind is the main key, you have to blow into mm -hmm. it to make sound. Um, so one of the woodwind instruments that we have here that I have buried on the desk <laughs> is actually a recorder. <clears throat> I'm sorry, parents. Yeah. We love you. Um, but recorders are awesome woodwind instruments. They used to be made out of wood. They come mm -hmm. in lots of different sizes. This is the one that we would normally play in yeah, school. This is, this is a soprano. <clears throat> this is what you play at Jefferson. Yes. Yeah. So if you have them at home... You can play songs like Mary Had a Little Lamb, or there's tons of YouTube videos that tell you how to um, play recorder. I'm just gonna play mm -hmm. it for you real quick, like. <laughs> so basically, woodwind instruments have lots of holes, and that is one way that you will know that it is a woodwind versus a uh, brass <clears throat> instrument, is that woodwinds have lots of holes to cover. And when you cover the holes, it changes the instrument. Um, one quick thing to mention, any instrument that is bigger is going to make a lower sound. Right. And any instrument that is high, uh, that is smaller is going to make a higher sound. Higher sound. <laughs> That's right. So um, this <clears throat> soprano recorder will make a higher sound. But the more holes that I cover, it actually makes it have a lower sound like this. Right. 
Okay, I can't make the last sound. <laughs> there we go. It takes just a teeny yeah. bit of air. I over blew that. Right. Okay, so the more um, holes that we cover with our fingers, it makes it a longer way for the air to get out, which makes it a longer instrument, which makes it a lower sound. That makes sense, right? right? right. So woodwind instruments, they have all these holes to cover, and I'll play a quick tune real quick for you, maybe, <laughs> so you can hear the sound of the woodwind <clears throat> instrument. So, you know, like we said, there are lots of different recorders, um, bigger sizes. Uh, we actually have a couple of friends that, um, that own many different sizes of recorders and play recorder music because, you know, hundreds of years ago, recorders were a, a very common instrument. There were recorder ensembles. That right. played music and music written for the recorder. So. Like if you were gonna have a birthday party in like the <clears throat> what 1600s, would you say? Uh, probably more ignore like, the crashes in the background. Probably you know a little bit earlier than that. Okay, 1500s. Let's say you're yeah. gonna have a birthday party in the 1500s and you're not in quarantine, then you would might hire a recorder ensemble to play at your birthday party. Like today, you might would hire a DJ. That's the popular thing to do. But a long time ago, you would have hired a maybe a recorder <clears throat> ensemble. Maybe. Because that was a popular thing. Or a string quartet. Well, you know. <laughs> All right, so our last family, because I see we're getting close <clears throat> to the end mark. Our last uh, family is the brass family. And mm -hmm. Dr. J here is a brass player. That is his main instrument. So he's going to yeah. demonstrate some things real quick for you on the brass family. So... You know, the brass instruments, they're all made out of brass. Um, and you still have to blow into them. Yeah, you still have to use air. Um, but instead of having the wood, the piece of wood vibrate, it's your lips. So whenever we blow air into a brass instrument, we're also doing this. We're buzzing with our lips. Right. Lovely sound, but when you actually do that in an instrument, it, um, it creates a really nice sound. Um, you know, you're adding lots of different things to it. Now, um, Ms. Johnson mentioned that, you know, drums were the oldest instrument. Well, brass instruments used to be conch shells. Like, people used whatever they could find. Um, conch shells, uh, animal horns, like the shofar, um, different things like that. Really, really old instruments. Like, these are definitely some of the oldest instruments that would have been used. And you can't get a lot of notes out of it. You can only get one maybe two depending on the size of the conch shell. Um, I have several of these, but um, this is just one of them. So you can kind of see that the top, the tip of the shell has been, you know, kind of filed away so that there is like a mouthpiece and an opening there. So you put that up to your lips. Let's see if I can do this. You buzz into it and the sound comes out here and it's it's a brass instrument. From and it's that, brass because you're buzzing your Right, lips. because you're buzzing. You're because buzzing you your are lips. the vibrations. Right. So now, <clears throat> you know, brass instruments, we have mouthpieces. We do the same thing. We have to buzz into the mouthpiece. And then <clears throat> when we put it on the instrument, like I said, it makes a completely different sound. So I play the horn or the French horn. We don't... Those of us that play it call it just the horn, but um, this lovely instrument right here, lots of tubes, lots of slides, some keys right here, bell. Um, so I'm just going to play it just for a second, just kind of give you an idea of what it sounds like. So we can play high notes, we can play pretty low notes. Um, very versatile instrument. Now, <clears throat> brass instruments, they all have valves and keys nowadays, but back in the day, they didn't. It was just a, a big old piece of tubing. And same thing with trumpets. Um, trombones, you know, they have slides. Um, so they, they, they've always had slides, but horns and trumpets, we used to not have valves. 
So this is a natural horn. So this is, um, I guess you could say the <clears throat> the uh, the father, the, the predecessor, the of grandfather, the, yeah, the of, grandfather? The, of the French horn. Um, but you can see no valves, so you have to actually put your hand in the bell in order to play lots of different notes. But. <laughs> So those notes are the only ones that I can play. And there are some that are missing, and what I have to do is I have to move my hand around in the bell. Lovely sound, but, you know, that's what we had to... It's what horn players had to do back in the, in the uh, 16, 1700s. So. so we also have one more kind of horn here. Can you come around behind us? This is our seven-year-old Miles. Some of you know him from Ms. Howard's first grade class. Say hi. <laughs> hi. And he's going to demonstrate. Come up here so that everybody can see you. Back up, buddy. There's Parker again. Back up, buddy. <laughs> so Miles is going to demonstrate the alto horn, which he <laughs> turned around with. You got it upside down. Yeah. There you go. He's been practicing on the alto horn. So he's going to... Well, so the alto well, horn is well, very, it's it's very common in British brass bands. It kind of sometimes takes the place of the French horn in those bands. So he's going to just show you how he buzzes into the instrument for us. Go ahead. <laughs> That's right, and by moving the valves, Parker, back up. By pushing the valves in and out, he can change the sound. These are the valves right here, which happens to be missing one of uh, button at the oh. moment. Fine. We'll find that. Yeah. Here you go. We'll find it. Thank you so much. So um, the brass instruments, you have to buzz in order to make. You have to buzz your lips in order to make a sound. So here's what our challenge is for you guys today. Hello. Our challenge is. Thank you, friend. Stop. For you guys to go make your, uh, or to find some instruments in your house and to share videos or um, pictures of you playing the instruments, or maybe your parents playing the instruments in your house. So, like if your mom played the flute and has one in her house, we would love to see that. Yeah. Or if you ha have a guitar or a piano or a trumpet, any of those kinds of instruments. We even have we have a trumpet, but it's kind of not functional. Yeah, we have a trumpet, a but trumpet. one of the valves is, yeah, it's not working. Yeah, so if you have any of those instruments, thank you. If you have any of those instruments, we would love to see a picture or a video of you playing them. Or even just holding them if you can so we can see mm -hmm. all the things that you have. Yeah. All right, guys. I'm so glad that you tuned in. Um, happy Wednesday. And we will probably see you again on Friday. We'd love yep. to add some of your, um, your videos and pictures in with our uh, lesson on Friday. So send us what you have. Yep. And we'll see you really soon. All right. Bye. bye.